Welcome to this video lecture. We're going to continue talking about internal convection. We're going to show another example of deriving a temperature profile. We are using an energy balance and the principles of internal convection. So in our last example we derived an energy balance when we had constant surface flux. This time we're going to look at if we have constant surface temperature. So let's just think about this a little bit first. So if we have this pipe we have fluid coming in at an inlet temperature a mean inlet temperature Tm comma I and then if we had this constant surface temperature throughout let's say this were a really long pipe I want you to stop and think how does the temperature of the fluid change so what how does T mean of X look so if it's coming in if we were to plot this versus X is going to come in at T mean inlet and let's say our surface temperature is this higher temperature, let's say this is a heating condition. We would expect, eventually, we'd expect this fluid to get very close to the surface temperature. Eventually, toward the end of the pipe, we'd expect it to be close to there. But if you notice, um, there's going to be a bigger driving force for heat transfer at the beginning, so we'd expect our temperature to increase more at the beginning. There would be higher flux at the beginning because of that higher driving force. So what we should see is that our, our mean temperature um, asymptotically approaches the surface temperature and the longer the pipe is the closer that's going to get to our surface temperature. So just conceptually that's how we should expect this to play out. Let's see if we can do that mathematically by having an actual energy balance. Okay so let's go about deriving this energy balance now. So our first step as we did in the previous example was to define a differential control volume. So let's go ahead and let's pick an arbitrary place somewhere in this pipe and let's do an energy balance on the fluid within this pipe or channel. Let's say that it is dx units wide and energy is going to be coming in with a flux given by Newton's law of cooling. So this flux is equal to H times the surface temperature minus the mean temperature at that particular point. So the flux would be changing if our mean temperature is changing. So we shouldn't expect Q double prime to be constant throughout. So if we were to look at the, again, a way to quantify how much heat is going into a, into a fluid through a channel like a pipe, we could express that as M dot CP times T out minus T in. So if we think of this little segment as just a really short pipe, and we, if we wanted to look at the differential amount of energy that's being added, we could say dq is equal to m dot cp times dtm. So this marginal change in energy, think of this as just a really small delta t, also gives you this really small change in heat. So that is the a measure of the um, enthalpic energy or the internal energy that is being added into our fluid. The fluid is absorbing it by having a temperature change. So how is that energy getting in? Well that is by convection. So that is going to be equal to our flux uh, times the appropriate differential area. So our flux is going to be characterized by H times Ts minus T mean so to get that differential area, that is going to be our perimeter. So again, for a circle, that's going to be 2 pi r. So our perimeter times dx. So this equation does represent an energy balance. So we have, um, we have out here, we have in here, and then we have in here as well. So you could break that down. You could think about that in terms of accumulation equals in minus out. We sort of just skipped some of those steps. So another trick here that's going to make the math a little bit easier is to define a new variable called delta t. So delta t in this particular instance is going to be equal to Ts minus uh, Tm, so the surface temperature minus the mean temperature. And if we differentiated that, we would see that dTm, or this differential change in our mean temperature, is going to be equal to minus d delta t. And if we rearrange that, we see that uh, d delta t is also equal to minus 
dtm. So we're going to make that substitution. We're going to substitute this delta t in here, and we're going to substitute this d delta t into here. So we're actually going to pick up this minus term there. So if we rearrange that equation, we get something that looks like this. Minus m dot cp multiplied by d delta t is equal to h times p times delta t times dx. So we're going to skip over to the next uh, page. We're going to rearrange this equation to put it in a form that we can integrate. So doing some rearrangement, we end up getting d delta t over delta t is equal to minus h p dx over m dot times c sub p. Okay, so now what we'd want to do is we would want to integrate this. So if we integrated from the delta t at the inlet, and we want that to be our delta t um, at any given x, we'd want to do that integration from 0 to x. So this is a definite integral. We don't need to worry about constants of integration because we're going to be subtracting off those constants of integration. Um, we're going to be sub subtracting terms here. So we end up getting, as we do this integration, we end up getting the natural log. So this is, think of this as dx over x, that the integral of that is natural log. So when we do that, we end up getting the natural log of delta t minus the natural log of delta t sub i when we do the um, use this definite integral here, which is also equal to the natural log of delta t over delta t i. So on the left side, this integral is much, I mean, on the right side, this integral is much simpler. So this is just minus h p x over m dot c p. So by raising each side, uh, by taking e to each side, we end up being able to rearrange this equation and we get it into the form of delta t over delta t i is equal to e to the minus h p times x over m dot times c p. So that is our equation. We can make that substitution where we're um, reversing this substitution we made and we end up getting that t s minus t mean as a function of x over ts minus t mean comma i is equal to the exponential minus h p x over m dot c p. So basically what this equation tells us is that we would expect to see if this is our x and this is our mean temperature we're going to have this inlet tm comma i we will indeed see our temperature as it goes down the length of the pipe asymptotically approach the line. So if you were to take this equation, solve it for Tm, and plot it, you would get this. You're going to um, exponentially approach your surface temperature. So here is that equation again. Um, so whenever we have a constant Ts, this is the temperature profile that we would get. If we wanted to figure out what our outlet temperature is, well, that's just a matter of substituting in L, or the pipe length, for X. And typically, we'll be dealing with a, an H bar or a constant value of H there. So making that substitution, we end up getting that. We can find our outlet temperature um, just by making that substitution for L. So again, here's how that looks. Notice the driving force. So this all comes down to driving forces. When your fluid first enters at Tm comma i, there's this big temperature difference here, this delta Ti at the beginning. So you have this much bigger driving force for heat transfer, which means more of the heat goes into your fluid and you see the temperature rising pretty quickly. However, as it rises, that sort of kills the driving force itself and that driving force gets smaller and smaller 
and so you see this gradually changing slope. But if you did have a very long pipe, you could see that eventually your um, your outlet temperature is going to get very close to the pipe surface temperature. And we derive all of this by just by doing this differential energy balance and assuming a one-dimensional system. And we can do that because we're using the mean temperature with respect to R. And by doing that, we're able to get these nice, a lot of good information about the temperature profile and how temperature of our fluid evolves as a function of distance down the pipe.